Okay, <clears throat> so we're continuing with our study of confidence intervals, and today we are looking at confidence intervals for the mean with sigma unknown. So the last section we worked with sigma known, and now we're going to see what to do when we don't know the population standard deviation. Okay, so we've got two different learning objectives for this section. The first one is to basically learn about a new type of distribution, which is called the t-distribution. So, so far, we know about normal distributions, and we know about binomial distributions, we know about the standard normal distribution. And now we're going to introduce a brand new inter, uh, distribution, which is called a t-distribution. And so t-distribution is going to be actually similar to the normal distribution, because there are a whole bunch of t-distributions, and it's based on the degrees of freedom, right? So just like there are a whole bunch of normal distributions based on your mean and your standard deviation, you get a different normal distribution. Well, based on your degrees of freedom, you get a different t-distribution. Okay, uh, so we'll learn about t-distributions. And then the second objective is to learn how to construct and interpret confidence intervals for population mean, right, which is for mu, when sigma is not known. And the new, um, the new, I guess the new command on our TA-84 is going to be t interval. So that's going to be inside of our distribution. So second vars. And then we go to, oh no, just kidding, not second vars. We'll need to go to second, sorry, we'll need to go to stat tests. Stat and then click over to tests, and then we want to do T interval. So on my TI-84, it is number eight, T interval, okay. So let's talk a little bit about the T distribution. So I'll let you read, read this part here. And basically, a t-distribution is a scaling of a stand uh, of a normal distribution, right? Um, so a t-distribution is going to have um, it's a it's a linear scaling of a normal distribution, but it's based on the sample means. Okay, so when we're working with the t-distribution, we need to have three kind of three things satisfied. Either uh, we need to have the population standard deviation is unknown, right? So another way to say this is to say that sigma, sigma is unknown. We need to have the sample size less than 30. So n is less than 30. And we need to know that our random variable is approximately normally distributed, right? So if we knew that our sample size was greater than 30, well, no, never mind, forget that. The second bullet point here is that the critical values of T are denoted by TC. So remember, when we had the standard normal distribution, our critical values were ZC. Here, for our T distribution, the critical values are denoted by TC. And so in the middle here, we've got the formula this is the formula for obtaining the t distribution when you know your based on your uh, sample standard deviation and the size of your sample n. Okay, let's talk about some general properties of the t distribution. The first two, or the first it's three, actually. Thank you. The first three are very similar to those of, stand, of normal distributions. The mean, the median, and the mode are equal to zero. The distributions are bell-shaped and symmetric. The total area under the curve is one. 
But now we get into some differences. The tails in a T distribution are thicker than those in a standard normal distribution. And this, instead of uh, the standard deviation is always greater than one. Okay, now how do you know, um, I kind of hinted at this before, but how do you know which T distribution you're working with? Well, it depends on the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom are a parameter that we use to give us all of the different T distributions, right? The larger the degrees of freedom, the closer your T distribution is to the standard normal distribution. So now the formula, this is something that you'll want to remember. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. Okay, so it's the number of free choices left after a sample statistic such as x bar is calculated. So once you calculate x bar, how many degrees of freedom do you have left? Well, you'll have n minus 1. Now, this last, um, this last little graphic here I think really says it all. So I just kind of want to follow, I kind of want to follow. In blue, we have the standard normal, right? So this blue curve here is what we would have for a Z, the Z distribution, right? Where standard deviation is one and the mean is zero. Now the tails, we kind of mentioned this before, but the tails in a T distribution are thicker so they have thicker tails, thicker tails. And what do we mean by that? Well, the tails are thicker. So for instance, see this is a thicker tail versus, let's see the tail for just the standard normal, right? So the tails are thicker and the standard deviation is greater than one. So the standard deviation for a T distribution is larger than the standard deviation of standard normal curve, right? But as your degrees of freedom increase, then your curve starts to become more and more and more like a the standard normal distribution. And in fact, the magic number is about 30. So after 30 degrees of freedom, the T distribution is very close to the standard normal distribution. Okay, so let's practice with finding uh, critical values or a 95% confidence level when the sample size is 15. So here's how we're going to do it. On the TI-84, now notice this is only for the TI-84. If you do not have a TI-84, then um, you'll need to find some different resources. There are resources online for how to essentially program your calculator to give you the, um, how to give you the, the critical values. But if you have a TI-84, then it's relatively simple. We're going to use inverse T. So instead of inverse norm, we're going to use inverse T. And this is the, this will give us the inverse of a T distribution. So we go to second vars to get our list of all distributions. And on the TI-84, it is number four for inverse T. Now, with inverse T, this is what your screen should look like. So you should be able to put in the area, the degrees of freedom, and then click paste, right? So for this problem, what is the area? The area is going to be, the area is going to be zero, here, let me see. The area is going to be the area is going to be one minus c over two, because for our t distribution, remember we've got fatter curve, uh, fatter tails. So say this is our t distribution. Still, the area in the middle, this area is going to be equal to zero point nine five, right? And then we need to know what is this cumulative area. And so this cumulative area is going to be 1 minus 0 0.95 over 2. So in your calculator, you don't need to calculate this separately. 
you can just put 1 minus 0 0.95 and then slash or divided by divided by 2. So we'll have 1 minus 0 0.95 divided by 2. And then for degrees of freedom, remember degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So our degrees of freedom are going to be 14. And then we go to paste. And hit enter again. And so this value is negative 2.144786681. So this value due to symmetry, 2.144786681. So we can estimate that TC is approximately 2.145. Okay. So 95% of the area lies between these two these two curves here. So 95, that area is 95%. And so I think this ended up being, this area under this tail ended up being 0 0.025. So 2.5% over here, 2.5% over here, and then 95% in between the plus and minus 2.1 Four or five. Okay, so how do we build a confidence interval? It is very, very similar um, with the formulas that we used in the last section. The only difference is our formula for the margin of error. Because sigma is unknown, we'll be using our sample standard deviation and Instead of ZC, we'll be using our critical T values, okay? All right, so we still have three different ways to represent our confidence intervals. So X bar plus and minus E. We can have interval notation. X bar minus E is the left endpoint. X bar plus E is the right endpoint. And then we have this third way up here as well. So that doesn't change. Now... On the calculator, I kind of mentioned this before, but we're going to use T interval, and how we get to T interval is stat, and then over to tests. So you go to stat, and then you click over to tests, and then once you click over to tests, T interval is number eight. And you have two different, so when you hit that, um, you've got two different options of how you're going to input your data or input the data for to create your confidence interval. You could either use statistics if you just have, so if you have your C level, you've got N, you've got your sample standard deviation, and you've got your X bar, then you want to use stats. If, however, you have a bunch of data, then for input, you're going to use data right? And then you'll tell it what list to use. You enter your data into L1, and then from there, the calculator will be able to compute X bar, SX, etc., and N, right? Okay. And we have the words here. As always, no, this now, this part, first part here kind of starts to make more sense. If we're doing a confidence interval for the mean and sigma is unknown, then we need to verify that sigma is not known, right? And then always we need to have a random sample and we need to have a normally distributed population or a sample size larger than or equal to 30. Okay, um, we talked about how to use inverse T to find the critical values and how our formula for margin of error will is modified because we don't know our population standard deviation. And let's get to an example. So we're here we are. We are constructing constructing a confidence interval. So I want you to take a moment and I just want you to try to 
Try to see if you can figure out the relative information uh, or the important information in this word problem. All right, what's the information we're going to be looking for? Okay, let's see here. Well, we're actually going to try to solve this problem in two different ways. Right, first we're going to use T interval, which is on our calculator. And then we are going to do the method using critical values. So, now, before we do T interval, or before we use t-interval, we will be able to use t-interval, but let's just verify that we satisfy the conditions, that we satisfy the criteria. So the first one is we need for sigma to be unknown. And sigma is going to be unknown because we're not given that information. The only information we're given is information about our sample standard deviation. So... Just checking this off, sigma is unknown. Okay, we know that we have a sample size of 16 because we select 16 coffee shops and measure the temperature of the coffee sold at each. The sample mean is 162, so x bar is going to be 162 degrees Fahrenheit. And the sample standard deviation, S, is 10. And now we need to find the 95% confidence interval for the mean temperature. So this tells us that C is equal to 0 0.95. We need to, and also we're able to assume that the temperatures are approximately normally distributed. And that's important because Remember, N needs to be greater than or equal to 30, or the population needs to be normally distributed in order for us to use the theory that's allowing us to do these computations. So just, I actually kind of want to step back and say, what is, what's the random variable that we're working with? Well, X is going to equal temperature of coffee. So you say coffee temperatures. And so X is a random variable. And apparently X is approximately normally distributed. So X is, we can put here X is normally distributed. Right, it's almost normally distributed, same thing. And now, We've taken a sample where n is equal to 16, and we found that from that sample, we've got a mean and a sample standard deviation. So let's see if we can construct our confidence interval. So with t interval, let's see here. I've got statistics to input. What are the statistics? I know my x bar is 162, so I'm going to put in x bar 162. Right. So for input data and stats, I'm going to select stats because I've got statistics to put in. What is my sample standard deviation? It's going to be 10. So SX is going to be 10. What is N? N is 16. And C level, well we get that, that's our confidence level is 0 0.95. And then let's just calculate. Okay, so 10, N is equal to 16, C level is 0.95, enter, enter. So I got 17.571 comma 28.229. So with a 95% confidence level, the average coffee temperature is... It's 845. Thank you. So with 95% confidence, average coffee temp 
is between 17.571 degrees Fahrenheit and, hold on, wait. This, I think I, I must have made a mistake because, how did I, why did I make a mistake? Because if my, if my sample mean was 162, that should be, that's my point estimate and it should be the middle of my, it should be the midpoint of my interval, right? So it can't be that the coffee temperature is between 17 degrees Fahrenheit and 28 degrees Fahrenheit and I got a sample with the sample mean of 162 degrees Fahrenheit. So as I look back, I made an error. So I did not change my X bar. So let me go back into stat and tests. And then I want T interval. So let me change that to 162, 10, 16.95. Okay, calculate. Oh, okay, this makes a lot more sense. So we'll have here now 156.67 and 167.33. So 156.67 degrees Fahrenheit and 167.33 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, good. Now, let me ask you this. This is a side question. So this is just a side question. Could you figure out the margin of error? Sure you could. Here's how. You can take your right end point, which is 167.33, and subtract it from your midpoint, 162. So 167. Point 3, 3, and subtract it from 162. So it must be that 5.33 is your margin of error. So that comes in handy. All right. So I think there's some homework problems. Another thing you could do is you could take your right endpoint minus your left endpoint and divide by 2. So you've got a couple of different ways that you can find your margin of error. Okay. Now let's solve the same problem by using critical t values. And what this means is we're going to find a formula for e, right? We're going to, not a formula for e, but we're going to calculate e using this formula, which means we need to know our critical t values, right? We've already got s, so we know that s is equal to 10, and we know that n is equal to 16. So we've got to find our critical t value. Now, Here's where our confidence level comes into play. So our confidence level is 0.95. So my confidence level is 0.95. Then this middle area here has an area of 0 0.95. So what is this area in this tail? It's going to be 1 minus 0 0.95 divided by 2. That should get 0 0.025. So for area, I'm going to put in 0 0.025. For degrees of freedom, I'm going to put in 15 because remember it's n minus 1. And then I'm going to do paste. So I'm, here I am at inverse norm. Degrees of freedom is 15. Enter. And I got negative 2.13145. Okay. So negative 2.13145 is this value right here. So then this value must be 2.13145. So that's my TC. So I'm going to use TC as 2.13. So what is my margin of error? It's going to be 2.13 times 10 divided by the square root of 16. 2.13 times 10 divided by 16. Square root of 16 is 4. So I get 5.325. So now that I have my E, if my E is 5.325, And my x bar, x bar 162. 
So I should be able to compute 162 minus 5.325 to get my left endpoint. So I have 156.675. And my right endpoint is going to be, let me just change that to plus, 167.325. So I could say, for instance, that my confidence interval is 162 plus or minus 5.325. So I could say that, or I could give the this notation right here, 156.67 comma 163.33. Either way I do it is fine, and I have the same interpretation. Okay, good. Now, let's see what else we need to talk about here. We want to talk about how do you tell if you use a normal or a t-distribution. In other words, how do you tell if you're going to use z-interval or if you're going to use t-interval? Another difference is how do you know if you are using e equals zc times sigma over square root of n or e equals tc times s over square root of n, right? Because all three of these go together and all three of these go together. So how do you know which, what you're doing, what type of confidence interval you're creating? The answer is based on whether you know sigma. So if sigma is known, then so if sigma is known, then you're going to be looking at right here. Bless you. You're going to be looking at Z interval, right? You're doing Z interval. And this is assuming that your population is normally distributed or N is greater than or equal to 30. If sigma is not known, then you are working with T interval, right? But in both cases, you need to know um, you need to know that your sample size is at least 30 or your population is normally distributed. If your sample size is less than 30 or your population and your population isn't normally distributed, then you've got to do something else. You can't you can't create a T interval with or you can't create a confidence interval with the methods that we've discussed so far. So let's read this and then try to figure out, should we use a normal distribution, T distribution, or neither? Okay, and the goal is to construct the 95% confidence level. Confidence interval for the population mean construction cost. Okay, so in this situation, so it looks like X is equal to the construction cost construction cost to for new houses. And so X is going to be a random variable, right? Because depending on the house, the cost to construct it is going to be different, right? Okay, so we randomly select 25 newly constructed houses. So we have a sample of 25, right? Because each new house is going to have its construction cost. The sample mean Thank you. Sample mean is 181,000. So X bar is 181,000. And the population standard deviation is 28,000. Uh, so since the population standard deviation is 28,000, that means we're looking at sigma is known. So we're looking at a normal distribution. Okay, so we just have to check that the population is normally distributed or that our sample size is greater than or equal to 30. So our sample size is not greater than or equal to 30 because it's only 25. But wait, assuming that construction costs are normally distributed, bam. So therefore we can use normal distribution. All right. 
And that's the end of this section. So we basically in, were introduced to a new type of distribution, which is called a T-distribution. Depends on the degrees of freedom, right? So your degrees of freedom is going to equal N minus 1, right? It's got fatter tails. The area is still 1. It's still symmetric. still has the same mean of 0. But the standard deviation is going to be greater than 1. And the more degrees of freedom you have, the closer your T-distribution resembles on the standard normal distribution. And then the second thing we did was we learned about T interval and how to construct a confidence interval when you don't know the population standard deviation. All right, that's it. Thank you.